Today we're going to take a look at the inverse of a function and at the top of the page with our first bullet it says the f negative 1 x is read f inverse of a function. So f negative 1 of x is the inverse of the function f of x and that is obtained by interchanging the domain in range. Recall that your domain is the set of x values and your range is the set of y values. To graph an inverse function, you reflect each point across the line y equals x. This is equivalent to switching the x values and y values. And that's what the word interchanging means, to switch the x and y values of each ordered pair within the function. So if you recall from geometry, a reflection of the line y equals x, well first of all, what is the line y equals x? The line y equals x in the picture to the right is this dotted line. So we have our original function, f of x in red, and that was folded or reflected or flipped along the line y equals x to get the inverse function x. And the rule from geometry was that xy became yx. So if we take a look at a point in this picture, say we take a look at the point, it looks like it intersects here, which is 1, 0. If we reflect it along this line, it lands here. And that point is 0, 1. If your point is on the line of reflection like this, it's not going to move. But you can take a look at each point, and if you reflect along the line, you have its image. So for question number one, it says find the inverse of set A, which is represented by A to the negative 1, if the set is contains the ordered pairs 3, 11, 2, 7, 1, 3, and 0, negative 1. So A inverse, draw your set brackets. You're just going to take and switch the x and y coordinates for each of those points. So 3, 11 becomes 11, 3. 2, 7 becomes 7, 2. 1, 3 becomes 3, 1. And 0, negative 1 becomes negative 1, 0. So that's the inverse of that function, A. So you can list, okay, or find the inverse and write out the set of ordered pairs. Or in number 2, in this case, we have to graph the inverse. You do not have to state the coordinates, okay, but you can if that helps. So for instance, the coordinates of this point are 4, 2. Coordinates of this point are 3, 2. This point, 2, negative 1. And this point is 1, negative 3. Again, you don't have to do that. You just have to graph the inverse. What may help if you're just going to graph is to draw the line y equals x in here so that you can then reflect across that line. So going diagonally corner to corner, this is one box and then two boxes. So I go one, two, here's the graph. Here this is one and then a half, so a half and then one corner to corner. Here's a half, so then a half is here. And this is one corner one. So the graph is just these four points here. That's the inverse. Okay, if I want to check when I find the inverse of four, two, that becomes two, four to check the seam that I'm right. Two, four is right here. That's good. Flip these two points becomes two, three. And I have two, three is right there. Flip those, negative one, two. Here's negative 1, 2, and then reverse negative 3, 1, which is right here. So my graph is correct. Once you plot the inverse, we have to check to see, is the inverse a function? 
remember, in order to determine if it's a function, no x values can repeat. Okay? You can also use the vertical line test for this. So if I look at the inverse, which are these points right here, so if you wrote them out, you can clearly see the x values of 2 repeat. If you're using the vertical line test, you can draw the vertical line here, and you can see that it passes through two points. So is it a function, the inverse function of w, or the inverse of w is not a function? as the x value of 2 repeats. Number 3, on the same set of axes, sketch the graph of f negative 1 of x. So here's f of x there on the grid, and we're going to graph the inverse. And to do this, again, I can't write out all the points, but I'm just going to do this by drawing the line y equals x and reflecting each point. So this point here, well, actually, um, it is kind of hard to see corner to corner because the grid or the scale is counting by twos. So I'm going to actually write the coordinates. This point is 0, 3. So when I reverse that, that's 3, 0. This point here, the second one, is 1, 6. So switch that, that would be 6, 1. So in the middle of this box. This next point is 4, 9. So it becomes 9, 4. And then the next one is 6, 10. So that would be 10, 6. And the last one here looks to be at 10, 11. So that would be 11, 10. And I'm going to draw that curve. So that's part A. Part B says to state the domain and range of both of those graphs. So for f, our domain, since it's continuous and has a start and an end, the domain starts here for this one, and it goes all the way over to here. So on the x-axis, that goes from 0 to 10. And they both actually have a domain. No, I lied. Just the black one there, or the f of x. That's the domain, because if I think or have the end in mind, they should be switched. And without, since I highlighted, I couldn't see this point right there. So for the black graph, this one right here, this one has a domain that goes from 0 over to 10. Now the range, let's use the light blue so I can highlight on my y-axis. For the range that goes from here up to here which is 3 to 11. And knowing that I switch our domain and range for the inverse function in green, the domain is going to be domain range switched. So this range now becomes my domain, and we can verify that on the graph. So if I copy it down first, it should be x such that we go from 3 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 11, and then y such that we go from 0 to 10. So let's just verify that. Let's use this light pink. So the domain for this green function goes from here over to here, which is 3 to 11. 
that checks out. And then range goes from 0 to 10, that checks out. Good. And then part C, determine whether it is a function. So the inverse here is a function. The original f of x was also a function because that passes the vertical line test. And its inverse is also a function. The inverse is not necessarily always a function. And we'll see after we do some flipping or reflecting across the line y equals x where that happens. But for part c, f negative 1 of x is a function, which reminds me I should label as no x value repeats. So on the back side, so given a graph, we can reflect across the line y equals x in order to have the inverse function. If we're given a table of values or a set of ordered pairs, as in the first example, we can always switch the ordered pairs. But when given the equation, okay, we have to do it algebraically. So to do that, I'm going to follow the steps as I do the first example. So this is find f inverse of x, which is the inverse of f of x, if f of x equals 2x plus 6. The first step is to replace the f of x with y. So I'm going to rewrite it as y equals 2x plus 6. And the reason for that is to obtain the inverse, we switch the x and the y. So I'm going to switch the x and the y. And to find the inverse or the equation, that's the inverse, we now solve for y, so it's in the form y equals. So I'm going to subtract 6. then divide by 2. So y is equal to, now I'm going to rewrite it so it's separate. Okay, I can leave it x minus 6 over 2. That does get full credit, but we usually see in the form y equals mx plus b. And to do that, okay, take a look at the coefficient in front. I can't divide 1 by 2, so I leave it as 1 half x, so there's your slope mx plus b, and then divide the negative 6 by 2, it'd be minus 3. So you could write it as y equals x minus 6 over 2, or 1 half x minus 3 is equal to y. I would prefer that you write it like this, so you can see your mx plus b, but you can leave it um, as so on the left. Last one on this page. So on the same set of axes, we're going to graph f of x equals x squared plus 1, and the inverse of that. So let's first start by graphing in part a. y equals x squared plus 1. Remember, your f of x is the same as y. So let's go to the calculator, type it in under your y equals, and here's our table of values. Well, if it's x squared plus 1, we know from the origin, just from our transformations unit, that the vertex should be there, plus 1. So our vertex is 0, 1, so therefore 3 to the left, 3 to the right to keep it symmetrical. Um, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, 1, 2, 3. And the points that go with that are 2, and then 5, and 10. So let's graph that parabola. Negative 1, 2, negative 2, 5. And since I gave you such a small grid, um, those are the only points um, that we can actually graph. And then to keep it symmetrical, make my points here. So here's that curve. Oops, that's the original, not the inverse. You can leave it as f of x, or you can write out the whole thing, f of x equals x squared plus 1. Now part b, write the equation for the inverse. 
So the inverse equation, I'm going to use this here, and I'm going to switch the x and the y. So it's x equals y squared plus 1. Now, to graph this, okay, or to solve for this equation, I want to isolate the y because I want it y equals. So the first step would be to subtract 1, and you have x minus 1 equals y squared. We undo a square with a square root, okay, that cancels that, and y equals the square root of x minus 1. You want to remember to include your plus and minus because I'll show you what happens. If we go to the graphing calculator, I'm going to reset this. And I type in the square root of x minus 1. We only have half of the parabola. So in order to get the other half of the parabola, you have to put the negative square root in as well. If there's no sign in front of it, it means the positive. So I need to graph both the plus and minus. So you have to do it in two separate lines. And there's the bottom half. So the parabola flipped on its side. Okay, you can go to your table of values to get your points for both. Okay, starting at 1, 0. And you can use some of these whole numbers. But you should also make note, okay, that we obtain the inverse, the points for our inverse function by switching the x and the y. So you could just take this table right here. Let me grab the pen. And our new table for the inverse function, we'll just take each coordinate and switch it. So it would be 10, negative 3, 5, negative 2, 2, negative 1, 1, 0, um, 2, 1, 5, 2, and 10, 3. So here's our vertex at 1, 0. So 2, 1, 2, negative 1. 5, 2, 5, negative 2. All right, write the equation and state its domain and range. So um, I graphed it. It didn't say I had to graph. Oh, no, it did. Graph the original and the inverse. Write the equation, which we have right here. So here's the equation for part B, and state the domain and the range. So that's all I need to state now. So to add to part B, the domain for this function starts here, and it goes right. So that domain is x such that x is greater than or equal to 1. And you can see that from the table. Your lowest value is 1, and every other value is larger. Now for the y, because the parabola is sideways, it starts here on the y-axis, and then it's going to continue to go up, because as the parabola goes out, it's going up. And then it's going to go down, because as the parabola um, extends right, it's slightly moving down as well. So the range is y such that y is an element of the real numbers. It's all real numbers. Part C, to finish. Determine whether, and let's also remember to label, so f inverse of x equals plus minus square root of x minus 1. Determine whether it is a function. Well, if I draw my vertical line and use the vertical line test, we'll do it in this color here, draw a vertical line anywhere, I mean, if I draw it here, it does only intersect it once. But I have to be able to draw it anywhere um, so that it intersects the graph, and it can only intersect once. And so since it intersects twice here, um, f inverse of x is not a function. Um, and I just need an example. So in this case, is my x value of 2 as the x value of 2 repeats.
You can use a different number than two, such as three, four, or five, whatever x value. It all matters uh, where you draw your vertical line. Okay, we're done with number five. Okay, let's finish on this last page. So as we talked about, when you graph a function and then you find its inverse, the inverse is not always a function. And this happens when you have a parabola, okay, and the absolute value, because they're similar in shape, just one comes to a point with two straight lines where the parabola is curved. So at the top of the page, it says a function has an inverse only if each element of the domain has one and only one corresponding element in the range. Therefore, it's necessary with some functions to restrict the domain in order to eliminate double values in the range. Such functions are shown below. The star says a horizontal line test. So it is used to determine if a function's inverse will also be a function. So if I start with the parabola, which is a function, Okay, it passes the vertical line test. However, each element of the domain has one and only one corresponding element in the range. Okay, um, if I look at this here, using the horizontal line test, if I draw a horizontal line, say here, the horizontal line, if it intersects the graph twice, the inverse will not be a function. Because when you flip it, the, those two points would coordinate here. Once you flip it, it's going to fail the vertical line test. So we can do a horizontal line test before we start. So in this case here, I'll draw it here, which are these two points on the blue, and then that would correspond when you flip it in the red to these two points. Okay? So once you flip the V or a parabola, it's not going to be a function. So to restrict the domain, we basically cut it in half, okay? So if I were to take, uh, let's go back to, let me erase everything. Let's go back to the parabolas. If I cut this parabola in half and only look at the left side, okay, when I reflect it in orange, that would be this half. Drawing a vertical line, it would only touch or intersect both of those graphs in one spot. So the inverse would be a function. I could either take the left side or the right side, but I can only take one side. So I cut it in half right at the vertex, and when I reflect it, that part will pass the vertical line test, and therefore the inverse will be a function. So down here, How can we restrict the domain? Again, to restrict the domain, we cut the V or parabola in half at the vertex. So I'm going to make note of the vertex in each of these two curves. So if I cut it in half right here, You note that line, okay, that intersects, again, domain, the x-axis, right here, x equals 0. Right here, x is equal to 3. So if I cut it in half and only take, I'll use two different colors, let's use the green. If I take this half, okay, that domain would be x less than or equal to 0. That's one way I can restrict the domain. Or I can do the right side, which would be x greater than or equal to 0. Okay, same thing over here. We can take the right side, keep it the same color in orange. That would be x greater than or equal to 3. So just using the set notation. Or I can take the left side, which is x less than or equal to 3. Okay, last one, we're going to need to sketch a picture. 
It says, what is the inverse function given a of x is x squared minus 3 from x less than or equal to 0? So this is a restriction. So when you go to graph the curve, that is a parabola, okay, it's shifted down 3, but it's only going to be, okay, if it's right side up, x less than or equal to 0 is the left. So at 0, again, it's down 1, 2, 3, this is that half right there. What is the inverse function? Okay, that's going to be the reflection. So if I draw the line y equals x, and you can just take a few points. Okay, so say this point right here, which is 0, negative 3. It's not going to be negative 3, 0. So if you take a look at that vertex, here now it's going to be at negative 3, 0. And when you flip it, it's now going to go, we know it's going to be on its side. It's going to be that side right there. So that's our graph, but it wants to know what is the actual equation. So I first have to start by substituting y equals x squared minus 3 and solving uh, for y after I switch the x and y to find the inverse. So add the 3 over, I'm running out of room, would be x plus 3 equals y squared. Take the square root and y is equal to the plus and minus of the square root of x plus 3. However, okay, we just have that upper part. And I, we need to stop for a minute because I made a mistake and I noted that mistake because when I'm looking at my graph, this point here does reflect across the line and is here, but when you take this point right here, and you reflect it across the line, and it's going to be over here. So it's not the top half of the curve, actually. It's going to be below. And I'll show you a way that you really, um, in using the tool, I guess I should have used the tool, um, a way not to make this mistake. So it's actually below is the picture. If I go to the calculator, okay, for this right here, and I look at the table of values, x, y. For x less than or equal to 0, okay, that would be the negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. The values that go with that are negative 1, negative 2, uh, negative 2, 1, and negative 3, 6. This is for the uh, green curve, okay. If I actually take the inverse of that, okay, and I switch my domain and range. It's now negative 2, negative 1, negative 2, 1, negative 3. I switched the first one. Oh, we're coming to the end here. Negative 2, negative 1, 1, negative 2, and then 6, negative 3. 6, negative 3, here's 6, negative 3 is here. 1, negative 2 is here, and then negative 2, negative 1 is there. So to not, or to avoid the error, I guess you should do it on the calculator. And therefore, the bottom half of that is going to be the negative. So what is the inverse function? A, negative 1 of x is equal to the negative square root of x plus 3. Sorry about those mistakes.